The Checkpoints is presented by pharmaceutical company GM Pharma. statement, over 200 non-governmental organizations appealed to the European Commission despite the existing problems in Georgia along with an objective assessment of the fulfillment of the 12 priorities to recommend that the European Council grant Georgia the candidate status for EU membership in December 2023. According to the statement, Georgian non-governmental organizations believe that receiving candidate status, apart from the fact that it will be an important step forward on the path of the European aspirations of the Georgian people will help the Georgian people to better deal with Russian interests in Georgia. Lasha Khutsishvili, Minister of Finance of Georgia, met with Assad Alam, Regional Director of the World Bank for Europe and Central Asia in Equitable Growth, Finance and Institutions. Ivailo Izvorsky, Chief Economist of the World Bank for Europe and Central Asia. Antonio Nusifora, Practice Manager of the World Bank for Macroeconomics, Trade and Investment. Bilateral cooperation, current economic stance and post-pandemic progress made by Georgia towards economic and governance reforms were discussed along with plans for the future at the meeting. TBC Capital published a report on Tbilisi commercial real estate. According to the document, in Tbilisi street retail, average actual rent price increased by 11.2% year-on-year in nine months of 2023, reaching USD 19.3 per square meters, almost the same as 2019 level, 19.5 USD per square meter. In January, September 2023, street retail rent price um, per square meter meters stood at USD 27.2 in Vake. The growth amounted to 29%. Chogorati district ranked second with 32% growth, where per square meter price amounts to USD 26.2. The cheapest street retail rent price per square meter was observed in Nadzala Devi and Samgori. At the Global Gateway Forum in Brussels, EU Commissioner for Enlargement and Neighborhood Oliver Varhe and European Investment Bank President Werner Hoyer yesterday formalized a financial package by which the European Commission will provide a grant of 16 million euros through EIB Global to improve road safety along Georgia's East-West Highway. The project will include activities improving the physical safety of the roads, providing engineering services and awareness raising actions. The measure is aim to contribute to a decrease in the number and severity of road accidents. Moreover, enhanced safety on Georgia's extended trans-European network, Transport T10T, which connects the country to Europe as well as on certain local transport axes, will strengthen the country's trade links and economic growth. The project also contributes significantly to improving transport connectivity along the Trans-Caspian Corridor, linking Central Asia to Europe across the South Caucasus. This is The Checkpoints. I'm Elena Kwanjilashvili, author and the host of the show, and The Checkpoints team is ready to sum up Business and Economics Week for you. In October 2023, the Consumer Price Index increased by 0.6% compared to the previous month, while the annual inflation rate amounted to 0.8%. With regard to the annual core inflation, the prices increased by 2.4%, while the annual core inflation without tobacco amounted to 2.1%. The monthly inflation rate was mainly influenced by price changes for the following groups. Transport. The prices for the group increased by 3.6%, contributing 0.45 percentage points to the overall index. Within the group, the prices increased for operation of personal transport equipment. At the same time, prices decreased for transport services clothing and footwear. The prices increased by 3.3%, contributing 0.13 percentage points to the overall monthly inflation rate. Prices were higher for both footwear and clothing. Alcoholic beverages and tobacco. The prices increased by 1.3%, contributing to 0.09 percentage points to the overall index. Within the group, the prices were higher for both tobacco and alcoholic beverages. 
As for the annual inflation rate, it was mainly influenced by price changes for the following groups. Miscellaneous goods and services, the prices for the group increased by 9.8%, contributing 0.52 percentage points to the overall index. Within the group, the prices were higher mainly for the following subgroups. Financial services, personal care, personal effects, Alcoholic beverages and tobacco. The prices increased by 6.6% with the relevant contribution of 0.45 percentage points to the overall index. The prices increased for both tobacco and alcoholic beverages. Housing, water, electricity, gas and other fuels. The prices for the group posted a 4.2% increase which contributed 0.43 percentage points to the annual inflation rate. The prices were higher for the following subgroups. Maintenance and repair of the dwelling, actual rentals for housing, transport. The prices for the group increased by 1.2%, contributing 0.22 percentage points to the overall index. Within the group, the prices increased for transport services and purchase of vehicles. Food and non-alcoholic beverages. The prices for the group decreased by 1.2%, contributing 0.42 percentage points to the overall annual inflation rate. The prices decreased for the following subgroups. Oils and fats, bread and cereals, milk, cheese, and eggs, sugar, jam, honey, chocolate, and confectionery. At the same time, the prices increased for the following subgroups fruit and grapes, fish, vegetables, meat. Natia Turnava, acting governor of the National Bank of Georgia, met with analysts on Thursday. At the meeting, Natia Turnava drew attention to the recent decisions of the Monetary Policy and Financial Stability Committees. The meeting discussed details of the decision of the Monetary Policy Committee, the feasibility, macroeconomic trends and macroeconomic forecasts. Moving on to financial stability, they discussed the assessment of vulnerabilities and risks in the financial system, focusing on the structural characteristics of the financial sector and those aspects of the Georgian economy that are important for financial stability in the medium and long run. These meetings are very important for us. We hear the opinions of analysts about the current macroeconomic indicators and the decisions made. Therefore, we will continue to cooperate with analysts in this format so that the decisions we make are analyzed in detail and transparency is made certain, Natia Turnava said. Shalom Khatrishuili, head of the uh, Macroeconomics and Statistics Department of the National Bank of Georgia, and David Udiashuili, head of the Financial Stability Department, participated in the meeting. The ongoing conflict in the Middle East added to the underlying risks. It is a source of greater uncertainty that may pose added risks to the inflation perspective. This was the reason for leaving the monetary policy rate unchanged at a rather high level, Shalom Khatrishuili noted. Our decision to issue loans uh, of up to 300,000 lari only under hedge terms will significantly reduce dollarization and the systemic risks it entails, which will further strengthen financial stability, David Udiashvili noted. These meetings provide detailed and accurate information about specific issues to interested parties. Ripple, one of the world's leading technology companies, becomes the technology partner for the National Bank of Georgia's Digital Larry Pilot Project. The decision was made by the committee comprising internal and external experts of the National Bank of Georgia following a competition process which consisted of two phases, submission of a project execution plan, PEP, by shortlisted candidates in the first phase and demonstration of their technology solutions in the second. The committee has paid attention to a depth of understanding of the project purposes and use cases, as well as full commitment to the project's success. Clear project development roadmap, consistent use cases, gradual deployment approach, and best practices of business continuity. The company is a leading cross-border payments network that helps financial institutions integrate blockchain technology and mint digital assets. Ripple's CBDC platform stands out for its ability to provide central banks, financial institutions, and and governments with holistic end-to-end -end solutions. The company is currently conducting five pilot programs with different countries' governments and central banks. We're pleased to select Ripple as the official technology partner for our Digital Larry pilot project following a thorough review of all shortlisted parties. The committee selected Ripple due to its technical excellence and the expertise of its team. We look forward to moving ahead with Ripple and we are grateful to all other participating companies for their interest 
interest and effort in the selection process, Natia Turnava, acting governor of the NBG, said. James Wallis, uh, vice president of central bank engagements at Ripple, noted that the National Bank of Georgia is taking a global lead in exploring how it can use blockchain technology to take its economy into the digital era. By harnessing the power of the Ripple CBDC platform, this pilot will pave the way for a transformative investments in the utilization of blockchain technology within the public and private sectors. Our partnership with NBG demonstrates our commitment to driving innovation and efficiency, ultimately empowering public entities to unlock the full potential of secure and transparent blockchain transactions, James Wallace said. Moving forward, the National Bank of Georgia and Ripple will now jointly plan the project execution and gradual rollout plan. Meanwhile, Jihad Azur, director of the Middle East and Central Asia Department at the International Monetary Fund, answered our question about the standby program and its future prospects for Georgia. I mentioned it early, um, independence of central banks is an important piece in the credibility of monetary policy. Um, and um, the independence of the central bank has served Georgia well over the last uh, few years in dealing with several shocks and also in maintaining the monetary policy anchored. And we saw the result with the sharp decline in inflation in, in this year. And this is something that... Um, I would say applies for Georgia as well as also for many other countries in the region. The independence of the central bank allows the credibility to be there, allows also the target of the monetary policy, which is maintain price stability, especially in an economy that is relatively dollarized. All these elements are, are important features in order to give policy more credibility. And mm -hmm. credibility of policy is an important element these days in order to not only to preserve macroeconomic stability, but also to increase attractiveness, increase the attractiveness of foreign banks to come and do business as also uh, in, increase the attractiveness of investors. And this brings me uh, uh, to another comment that uh, maybe we, we, we need to stress on further. The countries are performing well, but for their future, they need to increase the level of regional integration, which requires more connectivity. Connectivity is something that is done can be done at, at the different levels, at the infrastructure level, for example, electricity or transportation. This is a region where you have low level of, for example, flights between countries, but also in terms of connectivity between policymakers. And this is something that is very important. We at the fund, we are working with the policymakers of the region in order to increase that, to increase the level of cooperation between, for example, central bank governors uh, in order to coordinate their, their policies uh, and also in order to increase the harmonization of rules. Therefore, more we have um, best practices applied in Georgia, in Armenia, and also in other parts of the world, a uh, part of the region, better we, uh, the region will be in terms of credibility and also the level of attractiveness of FDI, for example, will be higher especially mm. that since the global financial crisis, the foreign direct investment has dropped and did not recover. And the capital formation has been weaker than what it was before that. Therefore, those are institutional reforms that are critical for the stability on one hand and also to build the ability for those countries to attract investment and also to, to generate growth. What to expect from the weekly market watch? Here are some highlights by Georgia's leading investment bank, Galtin Taggart. NBG keeps key rate unchanged at 10%. On 25 October 2023 meeting, the NBG kept its key rate unchanged at 10%. Inflation in Georgia remains below the target level, with annual inflation standing at 0.7% and core inflation at 2.5% as of September 2023. The NBG attributes the low inflation to the diminishing price pressures resulting from the pandemic and the Russia-Ukraine war, along with the influence of a tight monetary policy. Based on NBG's current forecast, inflation is expected to remain below the 3% target level in the upcoming months and stabilize at around target in 2024. While there are positive developments, the NBG emphasizes significant uncertainty due to the ongoing geopolitical tensions, including the Middle East conflict. 
Given these risks, the NBG decided to keep tight monetary policy and proceed with a gradual normalization. Considering this, Gauteng Tagart revised their forecast and expected the key rate at uh, around 9.75% uh, in December 2023 and at 8.75% by the end of 2024. The next committee meeting is scheduled for 20th December of 2023. Bank lending increased by 14.9% year on year in September 2023. In September 2023, the banking sector loan portfolio increased by 14.9% year on year, excluding FXFX, after a 14.6% year on year growth in the previous month. In an adjusted terms, the loan portfolio rose by 13.7% year on year, reaching 49.2 billion lari, which is around $18 billion. By sector, corporate loans increased by 16.9% year on year, and retail loans were up 13.3% year on year. In September 2023, loan dollarization stood at 45%. Bank deposits increased by 19.6% year on year to 49.3 billion lari, which is around 18.4 billion US dollars in September 2023. In terms of currency breakdown, lari deposits increased by 35.8% year on year and FX deposits grew by 7.6% year on year. As a result, the level of deposit dollarization came in at 50.2% in September 2023. International visitors at 2.3 million in third quarter of 2023. In the third quarter of 2023, international visitors to Georgia increased by 21% year on year to 2.3 million persons. This growth was mainly driven by a 15.4% year-on-year increase in tourist arrivals, followed by same-day arrivals. Russia was the top source country by international arrivals, followed by Turkey and Armenia. Most visitors traveled to Georgia via land, followed by air. Overall, 4.8 million international visitors traveled to Georgia in nine months of 2023, with tourist arrivals comprising 3.7 million individuals. Additionally, there were 1.2 million same-day arrivals, recovering at 58.9% of nine months uh, 2019 level. This recovery remains slow, reflecting restrictions on border crossings from Azerbaijan. What was new in business this week? Natia Taktakishvili will tell us more. Mari Giurga, the general director of Badagoni, summarizes the results for winter 2023 and notes that the company increased its production capacity this year. The winter 2023 was successful. Badagoni increased the production capacity by 25% and the amount of the processed grapes totaled to 8,000 tubes at the moment. Despite the bad weather, we are satisfied with grape quality, which is also reflected on wine, says the general director of Badagoni. The company Badagoni Badagoni combines up to 400 hectares of vineyards in the microzones of Kacheti, although it also cooperates with local wine growers and collects grapes from them. It should be noted that the annual production of the company amounts to 12 million bottles of wine. The Georgian company Meama producing capsule coffee and tea will start operating in the international market. Meama executive director Temur Bostoganashuli spoke about the company's future plans in TV program Business Week. As he mentioned in an interview with Georgi Sakadze, the company has developed a franchise model within the framework of the project. The first representative office of Meama will be opened in Azerbaijan. In December 2023, the company will already enter the German market and Later in Australia, the executive director of Myanmar states that the plans include establishing Myanmar as a global company. We already have a partner in Azerbaijan and our first representative office will be opened soon. In December, Myanmar will also enter German market and later in Austria. We work in two directions, west and east. The company will work on raising the awareness of the company as well as presenting the brand and establishing Miyama as a global exporting company, says Temur Bostoganashvili.
Wellness Resort Bioli is switching to a new mode of operation from November 1. Bioli Restaurant Hall will become an event space, while daily bookings of the cottages will stop until summer and guests can rent them from one month to one year. According to Bioli founder Thomas Pchedlidze, this regime will continue until new development project of Bioli is finished. We are going to develop the second part of the territory where a large outdoor pool with a glass dome will be arranged. A 60-room wooden Echo Hotel as well as four additional wooden cottages will be built and the lake will be renovated. It's planned to complete the construction works by next July, but I am not sure that it will come out, says Thomas Chedlize, according to the founder of Bioli. The company will invest 13 million USD to create new infrastructure. Until Bioli wellness services are restored in Kajori, they will be available in new branch in Tbilisi, which will also be operational from November. Thomas Chedlita started creating Bioli wellness resort in 2005 with the aim to offer a healthy life industry to the country, for which he has already invested 42 million USD. Jolly will export its products to the USA for the first time in January. Guram Suhashvili, the founder of Jolly, stated this in TV program Women's Narrative. The U.S. Food and Drug Regulatory Agency has completed studying of Jolly as a company which produces products for exporting to the USA. The registration process includes several stages, including laboratory analysis, all of which take between three to six months. We have passed more than half and we think that at the end of December or early in January, the first export of Jolly products will be carried out to the United States of America, Guram Suhashvili says. As the founder of Jolly notes, the demand is quite large, although at the first stage they will send up to 8,000 units of products to the USA. Jolly Products is located in Iguati. An American partner made the investment to set up the enterprise. Jolly Products are made with local raw materials. Company Natural Juice Producing Company is expanding its exporting markets. As the company's exports manager told BMG in 2023, the number of exporting countries will increase to 12. Last year, the company was positioned in eight countries. Kyrgyz Lomtata says that company's turnover is less due to the decrease in USD exchange rate compared to the last year. We have added new exporting destinations including Japan, Kazakhstan, Philippines, Dubai. We increased volume in Israel and Saudi Arabia. But due to the decrease in U.S. exchange rate, the turnover of the company is less compared to the last year. As for the exporting quantities, it's almost the same as last year because we had to increase the price due to which we lost some customers. To summarize, last year we exported our products to eight countries. The CR Kampa is sold in 12 countries, says the exports manager of Kampa. Georgi Lomtata talks about the share of exports and local sales for the company. He explains that around 70% of the production is sold in the local market, while 30% is exported. Hotel Roche Budauri will welcome customers in a renovated environment from this season. Hotel manager Michael Murachashvili spoke about this in an interview with BMDG. In the winter season, we are starting to operate with a renovated restaurant based on the fact that foreign vacationers staying in Gudauri ask for Georgian cuisine. We will mainly offer Georgian dishes in the old Georgian style, added Michael Murachashvili. Speaking about the news, the manager of Hotel Russia Gudauri notes that customers will be able to use the hot outdoor pool in the hotel area during the winter season, as well as they will offer its residents free transportation from the hotel to cable car in Gudauri. The hotel will start operating itself in the high level segment and offer high quality services to the customers. As of the current data, the main requests are from Lithuania, Latvia, Poland. Reservations from Israel are completely stopped. Preliminary expectations are not clear, but we hope that by keeping high standards, we will be able to receive visitors and turn the business into profit, said Michael Murachashvili. Hotel Roche Gudauri opened in 2021 and has 29 rooms, a restaurant, a spa and a pool. 
A new furniture store, Felice, has appeared on the market, which mainly sells furniture from Turkish manufacturers. But in the case of special order, they can also provide Italian furniture. Customers can find a large selection of premium quality sofas and armchairs, bedroom sets, and interior accessories in the Felice showroom. As the founder of the company, Sopo Gogolashvili, told BMW, their goal was not only to open a furniture house, but also to create a space that would help people create their desired interior design. There are a lot of furniture stores in Georgia, but the choice is low. People spend major of their time at home, so the answer is simple to the question of how important it is to make this space comfortable. It's within the feeling of inner happiness and coziness, says Sopo Gogolashvili. The shop is located in Tbilisi in Didi Di Romi at Mirian Mapa Street. They actively cooperate with construction companies. As its founder declares, the main challenge at this stage is to keep individuality. However, the furniture house successfully copes with the challenge and tries its best to meet the demands of customers. Furniture house Felice plans to expand and add new branches in the future. The social enterprise Wigstrom started production of men's wigs with natural hair for the first time in Georgia. As the founder of the enterprise, Kwanza Inasari Zetud, TV program Women's Narrative, men's wigs will appear on the market from 2024. We will be the first in the men's line. We want to fully satisfy the growing demand in the market with our production. Men's wigs will appear on the market from 2024, and before that, we are waiting for the arrival of latest equipment from China, with which our enterprise will be equipped and its production activity will increase. Kwanzaa Inasaridze noted, according to her, Georgian made wig prices range from 250 lari to 5,000 lari and are made of natural hair which allows them to compete with the imported products in terms of price and quality. Wigs room has been on the market for only one year and its sales rate is increasing every month. The social enterprise is located near Tbilisi in the village of Kamardweba. Since 2018, when the Spanish product delivery service Glovo appeared on the Georgian market, the company has invested more than 58 million euros in Georgia and paid more than 12 million euros in state taxes. In light of the company's fifth Georgian birthday, BMG's business evening and tech inform host Georgi Aronia sat down to talk to Sasha Misho, co-founder of Glovo. Sasha, hi. Thank you very much for your time. It's always a pleasure to talk to you about Glovo and um, your personal endeavors here in Georgia. Thanks. It's been five years since Glovo entered the Georgian market. Let's um, talk about what stages did the company went through, how did it grow, and uh, whatever's happened during uh, the last five years in Georgia for Glovo. Yeah, so, so Georgia was one of our earliest countries where we launched. Glovo is only eight years old. Uh, as you know, we're, we're launched in, in Spain, in Barcelona, and we grew very quickly. And we decided to invest in this region, and Georgia being one of the first countries in the region five years ago. And it's been a hugely successful market for us. Um, we've grown consistently year on year. Uh, we had COVID in the middle, which, which obviously accelerated growth because a lot of people were staying at home and ordering more. But what it really changed as well is what we call Q-commerce which is, in, in our business, is everything that's not restaurant food. Um, that's groceries, uh, specialist local stores, um, even you know, going into fashion, um, medicines, et cetera. So, so, and, and what that COVID did is actually educate the market, make customers order that type of product that they'd never ordered before. And the first reaction is, wow, this works. It's, it's quick, it's great service. And they've continued to do that. So that's our fastest part, part of the business growing now, is, and we call it multi-category. So our, our vision you know, is to give everyone easy access to anything in their city, and anything is the key here. So you know, our idea is when you, when you know what you want, and Global's going to come and pick it up uh, for more or less the same cost as me uh, going across the city, taking my car, going through the traffic, and um, and then you know, getting the queue and paying, then, then why wouldn't you order Glovo if the, if the service is great and the cost is pretty much the same? As you mentioned during the media briefing, Glovo invested over 58 million euros in Georgia within 
last five years and paid more than 12 million euros in state taxes. Could you please share some light into what areas of business did Glow invest this uh, pretty big amount of money? So we, play, we, we invest a lot in the local ecosystem now. It's, it's pretty clear we're part of the local cities where we operate. We operate in 12 cities um, in, in, in Georgia. Um, so A, we, we invest a lot in the operations. So all our couriers, you know, we have over 5,000 active couriers. And, you know, their income is very important, how much they earn, the amount of hours they work. So we invest a lot in that. There's been a lot of investment in that. Our team, our offices, our employees, um, our, our customer support center here. So we've got, you know, over 50 employees um, on, you know, running the business here. Um, and also we have a very large customer support and operations center with over 100 people. So we invest in, in local talent, local salaries, and then of course growth, uh, marketing, um, not, not just marketing that we would do online and offline, but also we work actively with partners in marketing and joint marketing campaigns with local, local restaurants and stores. So there's a lot of that about investment in, in the local ecosystem that means that we're, we're very part of, of the landscape here. You just mentioned customer support service. Let me clarify. Do you mean that uh, these people, 150 people, work from Georgia and uh, work in Georgia, or they also cover different regions that are important for Global from Georgia? No, they do cover some of the other regions, but, but generally um, the business is big here, so a lot of the support is done um, obviously in local language in Georgia and, and to give a, a better local support. During the media briefing, you also said that uh, for Glovo, Georgia is a unique country because the way you do business here is different from, uh, for example, how we do business in Barcelona or any other important markets for, for, for Glovo. Could you please explain what makes Georgian market unique for your company? Because I think um, here is you know, offering additional services that maybe are not um, something we would try in another country. So we've done a few initiatives here of you know, payment services, uh, we've done an agreement with one of the top banks, TBC. Um, we've done a joint, joint campaigns together. So I think mainly the innovation here to test things out. Um, you know, Georgian society is very digital, very open to new, new things. And also there's an opportunity here as well for us to become one of the leading, I call it quick commerce, Q commerce, because it's immediate commerce. So you get things in 30, 30 minutes, but it's actually a big part of e-commerce. So we could become a big e-commerce player in, in Georgia. So apart from Glovo, you are also a big part of the Georgian startup ecosystem. You've been for years now a um, jury member in uh, GITA, assisting GITA develop uh, Georgian startup ecosystem. Let me ask you, what is your personal involvement here and have you invested maybe in a few Georgian startups? So um, personally, yes, I've been coming, the, I've been part of the, the, you know, the tech ecosystem here in Georgia for the last few years. Um, I'm an active part of the GITA. Uh, committee, I, you know, I love seeing all these startups presenting great ideas. Uh, you know, challenging them sometimes. Uh, sometimes the business model—they have a great idea, but maybe the business model needs to be adjusted. Um, you know, I've invested in in a few startups, but as a business angel personally, um, I've been investing for many years. But recently, the last three or four years, with with Oscar, my my partner and co-founder in Global. Um, and yeah, the idea is to continue doing that. I love, I love working with founders. Uh, we're setting up a, a, a small venture capital fund. Um, it's small, as in 30 million euros for seed, pre-seed. Um, mainly focused in Southern Europe and France, but we will, we will be able to invest in other regions if there's great opportunities. So there's a possibility, of course, that there's a great early startup in Georgia um, that we think you know, can really grow um, beyond Georgia and into other markets, then, then obviously it could be an opportunity. Sasha, thank you very much for your time, for your interest. It's always a pleasure to talk to you about Glovo and uh, your personal endeavors here in Georgia. We wish you good luck. Thanks a lot. This week's economic news and outlook from the checkpoints.
Georgia's revised budget project for 2024 was considered on Thursday in a meeting of the government's Economic Council led by Prime Minister Irak Gharibashvili. Lasha Khutishvili, the Georgian finance minister, briefed the council members on the budget priorities, with the council noting that the 2024 budget considered increasing the financing of social protection programs. The project also includes the increase of remuneration for teachers and employees in the public sector and provides significant financial resources for the promotion of economic growth, the government administration said. The conversation also touched on the economic trends of the nine months of 2023, the results of the budget execution and new project as well as economic activities for 2024. The members of the Cabinet of Ministers on Monday discussed a project setting new standards for providers of dental services. On the initiative of Health Ministry, the rules for starting practice and operating will be stricter. The goal of this amendment is to protect patient safety and ensure service meeting modern standards. According to the amendments, criteria necessary for infection prevention, control and sterilization, disinfection and medical waste management are updated specified and defined in greater detail for dental clinics. To better manage the process, it will be mandatory to designate a person responsible for infection control in clinics. The requirements defined in the amendments for currently operating dental offices and clinics will come into force starting in January 2024. New establishments, however, will be able to start operating only by complying with these standards. The state will fund oncological surgery for cancer patients in Georgia. The project aims to provide financial support for oncological surgery, covering all cancer patients in the country except those insured with budgetary funds. This coverage encompasses both scheduled and emergency operations, extending to insured veterans and patients with annual incomes exceeding 40,000 lari. In a decision made in August of the current year, funding was already secured hormone therapy, chemotherapy, and medicines for all oncology patients nationwide. The recent change approved by the Georgian government further expands coverage to include financing for oncological surgery, ensuring equal accessibility to this treatment for all citizens. According to the decision, the treatment of oncological disease will be universally accessible to every beneficiary, regardless of their income, as part of Georgia's universal health care program. Levan Davidashvili, Georgia's Vice Prime Minister and Minister of Economy and Sustainable Development, held a working meeting with representatives of state agencies and business companies in preparation for the winter tourist season. The Ministry reviewed various infrastructure projects the government implements with the Tourist Trails Agency, focusing on the significance of the private sector's co-partnership in making Georgia an attractive and popular tourist destination. Irakli Burjuladze, the Director of Mount in trails agency spoke about the new ropeway complex and ski tracks in Gudauri that are significant for hosting high-level international sports and tournaments. The meeting continued in a discussion format with the participation of Deputy Economy Minister Mariam Krivishvili, Head of National Tourism Administration Maya Omiadze and State Inu in the Tretam Tianeti region David Nozadze. The process of systematic land registration begins in Tbilisi. The mayor of the capital, Kakakaladze, and the minister of justice, Ratib Gregwadze, elaborated on the land registration processes at the briefing at European Square on Tuesday. According to Kaladze, deliberate land grabs have been an acute problem in Tbilisi. In addition, there are many areas in the territory of the city where the definition of ownership extends beyond the boundaries of the municipality. According to him, systemic land registration reform will solve these problems. Since I was elected mayor of the capital along with many other challenges, my team and I have repeatedly faced such problems as, for example, some constructions on illegally appropriated state and municipal lands and the deliberate seizure of these lands. However, everyone clearly saw that there were specific people behind such facts who benefited from this. We are the people who were able to satisfy the families affected by dropped cooperative apartment buildings and there will be new people 
concerned about the mentioned problems left, said Kahakaladze. Natia Turnava, acting governor of National Bank of Georgia, together with the head of MBG departments, met with representatives of macroeconomic institutions on Tuesday. Achievements and challenges in the sector were highlighted at the meeting, also attended by the Association of Macrofinance Institutions. The activities of macrofinance sector in the past period were recapped and prospects for future cooperation were outlined. Further refinement of the regulatory framework and access to finance we had discussed at the question answer session. It was noted that the development of macrofinance sector will significantly improve the competitiveness of financial sector in general. Willingness was expressed to cooperate on increasing access to finance, which will support the creation of additional jobs in the country. Meeting with the macrofinance sector will continue in the future. The Georgian Minister of Regional Development and Infrastructure, Irak Karsaladze, provided information to the parliament members about the Rikoti Main Road construction project at the session of the Sectoral Economy and Economy Policy Committee. Karsaladze stated that the goal is to bring this section in line with the international standards, ensuring safety, quality, and development. The minister explained that the project underwent preparatory design works and international financial institutions were involved in the implementation from the design stage. Accordingly, the process took place in compliance with the procedures, policies and rules of these institutions. The minister noted that companies were selected to design the Rikoti Highway following the procedures of World Bank and Asia Development Bank. Designing the Rikoti Highway involved renovated companies from the United States, Italy, Turkey and South Korea. In total, 140 specialists participated with 46 being international experts and 84 being local experts in the designing process. The team included professionals in various fields such as tunnel and bridge engineering, geology, environmental protection, road safety and more, he stated. And before we say goodbye, here are some voices from the Tbilisi Silk Road Forum 2023, which took part in Georgia last week and which gathered more than 2,000 delegates in the capital city. More than 200 B2B meetings were held. The checkpoints is keeping its eye on the final results that can be counted after the forum. The Silk Road Forum, I am extremely impressed with the well organization, with the high level attendance, with the subject discussed at the forum, just to see the Prime Minister of Azerbaijan and the Prime Minister of Armenia sitting in one panel gives you a great idea how important Georgia is and how much the countries of the region and the international community trust Georgia and believe in its wisdom. We congratulate you on a well done job. We congratulate you on the great development you are doing to your countries, to the growth of the economy, to the wonderful infrastructure. You're doing a great job. Keep it up. So I'm here representing the United States at the Silk Road Forum, and I'm de delighted to hear the points that were raised today. First and foremost, what we firmly believe and support in is the middle corridor and the development of alternative routes of trade, transportation, connectivity, energy security, communications, and of course the movement of people and goods freely amongst the countries of the South Caucasus. Georgia stands at the middle of this opportunity and presents a great uh, leadership opportunity for Georgia for the broader region. Uh, the, the middle corridor, the Silk Road, that connectivity between Central Asia, between the Middle East to Europe provides alternatives and diversification, which we heard today is vital for national security for every nation in Europe and the broader region. As far as I know, there has been a discussion about this project initiative for last uh, several years. But today's forum, I saw much higher commitment, motivation by the uh, country in this region. They showcase a lot of uh, commitment, how to do, what to do, so very promising. On top of that, I saw this is uh, starting more attention from global community. 
This is not something limited to this region. It's relevant to global trade, global economy. That's why I see this forum working very effectively, very positively, constructively. I'm so pleased to be here at the forum that the Prime Minister is hosting, and we have robust participation from the United States, from our companies, and from our Agency for International Development. You know, when I was a young diplomat, I worked with Georgia on helping realize the Baku Tbilisi Jehan pipeline. And it is so amazing to be back here today and see what Georgia has accomplished um, in developing the Middle Corridor. What's what's been accomplished with your roads and the railways and the ports. So why we are here today, the United States and our companies, is to continue to try to support this development and participate in it because we know the true value of the middle corridor and Georgia's role in that middle corridor. So as ambassador here, I am absolutely committed to supporting the Middle Corridor. I think this forum is, the Tbilisi Silk Road Forum, is absolutely essential to bring together all of the private sector and the public sector, the leaders of the countries of the Middle Corridor, to help them develop this important transit way. We can't do this without private sector and public sector cooperating together. So I really do commend the Prime Minister and the Georgian government for holding this important forum to do that. First of all, congratulations to the uh, Georgian government in hosting uh, this fantastic Tbilisi Silk Road uh, Forum. It shows how committed the Georgian government on the uh, different stakeholders ensuring the connectivities in the region. With the presence of more than 2,000 people and representatives from 60 countries, it shows how Georgia is becoming a critical destination and a hub for many of the logistical uh, routes uh, in the region. It's a center between many continents uh, and uh, areas and uh, with the attendees and the diverse backgrounds of the uh, visitors and the discussion around us shows that the, there is a huge potential of collaboration and engagement with, the, with everyone in the region. And that's all for today. We will meet on Sunday 11 a.m. sharp. Before that, check us out on BMW for more updates on business and economics in Georgia and beyond. Checkpoints is presented by pharmaceutical company GM Pharma.